Good morning. Well, anybody who does auto repair will eventually come across this device, a leak down tester, a device designed to investigate and quantify the various causes for poor compression in a cylinder. Now, there are a lot of videos out there explaining the practicalities of how to do this test, but few that explore the details of how it actually works. If you're curious about the intriguing similarity between voltage drop testing and leak down testing, then this video is for you. So here's your leak down tester and you've got shop air coming in on this side and then on this side you've got a tube that adapts into a spark plug hole of the cylinder in question. And of course you want to do this testing at top dead center and frozen at top dead center so that the air pressure can't push the system down during the testing. But for the purposes of this discussion I'm going to substitute this device that allows me to decompress the cylinders inside. So here we have it hooked up to shop air coming in at about 90 psi. And from there it goes to a pressure regulator where the pressure is dialed down. From there it goes to a first chamber and this gauge here measures the air pressure in that first chamber. From there there's a narrow pinhole that you can't see leading to a second chamber right here and this gauge measures the pressure in that second chamber. Now don't be confused by the unusual labeling of this gauge. These are both pressure gauges. They measure pressure inside the chambers. Now I should tell you one thing about these leak down testers. Both of these needles, when there's no pressure on the system, when this is completely off pressure, both these needles should be pointed to your lower left. And if they're not, then you need to recalibrate your system. Now if these testers are subjected to excessive pressure, the teeth could dislocate off of the factory settings and you may need to reset that. Now fortunately that's a fairly easy procedure to do. You, uh, in my case I had a bad gauge here and so I took the gauge off, disassembled it and reset the teeth by simply dislocating the teeth to uh, correspond to 100% leak down being zero pressure on this system. So let's look at this more closely. Now there are a couple of features of this regulator that are peculiar. The first is that these regulators are sometimes built with a one-way valve that won't permit air to go backward up the tube into the tank and of course they do that to prevent contamination of the tank. This one has a little bit of a leak to it but if yours doesn't you may end up if your pressures are too high here you may end up having to decompress on this side to get the pressures back to normal. And then the second thing is that these are built with a locking mechanism so right now it's locked and you can't turn it. To unlock it you just lift the clip up and then you can raise the pressure. Now to raise pressure on this side you rotate this uh, clockwise and watch what happens. So you can see as pressure moves, the pressure on both sides increases. To calibrate this, what you need to do is you need to increase pressure until this gauge gets to that zero point. So let's do that now. You don't want to overshoot, as I said. Well, let's think about how this is working. You've documented poor compression on a compression test and now you want to build evidence that will support a diagnosis. Air could be leaking past bad rings, bad valves, the head gasket, or even through a cracked cylinder or cylinder head. If you did a relative compression test then you want to add to that list the chance of a restricted intake or a restricted exhaust. The critical point I'll make is that you're introducing a known fixed resistance. You get air moving and then you measure the pressure drop across that known resistance. Notice that when air starts to move, the pressure regulator should open up to maintain the selected target pressure. So when air starts to move, a quality leak down tester shouldn't have much sag of air pressure in that first chamber on the left. It's the difference between the measured pressures in the two gauges that measures the pressure drop across the pinhole. But since the left gauge pressure doesn't change much, you can look at the behavior of the more sensitive right gauge to estimate the volume of air that's moving. Now we can understand why the gauge is labeled the way it is. When there's no air flowing, the right gauge points to the lower right, the same peak pressures you dialed up to calibrate a no-flow state before hooking up the tester. And with a massive leak, you'd get pressures nearly as low as atmospheric pressures that you see now when the gauge isn't hooked up. Of course, the real advantage of leak down testing is to listen with your ears to where that air is actually moving, be it through the valves or through the head gasket or through the cooling system. But today I want to move on to an analogy that I find much more interesting. Now let's think about that clever solution. You introduced a fixed resistance and you got air moving and you measured that pressure drop across that fixed resistance and you used that pressure drop to estimate the resistance to air escape from the engine cylinder. Does that strategy sound familiar? Of course, this is exactly analogous to voltage drop testing in electronics. You want to quantify how much dynamic resistance there is in a circuit, so you introduce a known fixed resistance into the circuit. 
Then you critically get electrons flowing and measure the voltage drop across that known resistance. A big drop across the introduced resistance means resistance has to be minimal downstream. So there you have it. Leak down testing and voltage drop testing use the same principles. I hope this video helped you out, or at least inspired imagination. Thanks for watching.